So let's move on to our second speaker. I'll introduce Pumtwit. Professor uh, Pumtwit McCarthy is an associate professor in chemistry department at Morgan State University and also currently serves as the chair of the Maryland section of the American Chemical Society. Uh, Dr. McCarthy uh, has established an interdisciplinary research program that investigates carbohydrate producing enzymes from Neisseria meningitis for the development of improved vaccines and the production of new bio-based tools for remediation of heavy metals in waters. Uh, currently, her research is funded by the NIH and a technology transfer grant from Morgan State University. And Dr. McCarthy uh, joined Morgan State as an assistant professor in 2013, and uh, just this past year became an associate professor with tenure 2019. Um, before uh, beginning her independent career, Dr. McCarthy was an Arise and NIH Pratt postdoctoral fellow in Dr. Willie uh, Van Lott's laboratory that's at the FDA, and she, uh, previous to that, obtained her PhD in biochemistry at University of Delaware. So uh, welcome, pumped to it, and uh, we look forward to your Thank you again, Matt, and thank you to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to um, present my research today. And uh, the focus of our group is studying Neisseria meningitidis. And this is a, uh, one of the leading bacterial causes of meningitis. So we know that these gram-negative bacterial pathogens contain a polysaccharide-rich uh, capsular coat. And some of the um, polysaccharides found in this serogroup actually are uh, you know, what defines the individual serogroups of Neisseria. So there are six disease-causing serogroups, serogroups A, B, C, X, W, and Y. And uh, this is uh, the ones that are responsible for many cases of meningococcal meningitis. And there's a particular region in Sub-Saharan Africa known as the uh, meningitis belt, where there's an increased incidence of Neisseria meningitidis um, cause disease. So the cap capsular polysaccharides from these different serogroups, uh, some of which are shown here, serogroup A, serogroup C, Y, and W. Uh, I've highlighted the ones for which we currently have glycoconjugate vaccines. And uh, as I said, the capsular polysaccharides are defined by what sugars are found in um, the serogroups are defined by what sugars are found in the capsule. And the enzymes that create these capsular polysaccharides are known as capsule polymerases. Those of serogroup A and C consist of homopolymers, meaning their capsular polysaccharides consist of one, uh, repeats of one single sugar, as well as X and um, the other serogroups, serogroups W and Y contain uh, heteropolymers. We know the, that these capsule polymerases in my lab, we want to uh, sort of use them as tools for polysaccharide synthesis. And we're exploring basically two avenues for this work. One is using these enzymes to uh, synthesize sugars as components of glycoconjugate vaccines. Another is to uh, sort of use these enzymes to make polysaccharides in a designed way so that we can engineer new biomaterials for heavy metal capture. For this first goal, um, some of the work that I previously did as a, in my postdoc was uh, determining how we can use enzymes for size-controlled sugars so that we can make well-defined glycoconjugate vaccines. So as you heard uh, just before me in um, an excellent talk about the importance of valency. Uh, so currently, glycoconjugate vaccines uh, are in a way heterogeneous in terms of the fact that we can have multiple attachment points of the capsular sugars to the um, carrier protein. And much of the work that I did uh, previous to my independent career was focused on using capsule polymerases, specifically from serogroup C, in uh, chemo enzymatic synthesis of uh, sugars so that we can create a, a controllable synthesis of the sugars with one site for conjugation. And uh, also similar to the previous talk, we actually used uh, lactosides as our um, sort of acceptor, and those lactosides had a proparjo square rate, and we used enzymes. So the serogroup C 
capsule polymerase as well as um, CST2, which Warren Walkerchuk has uh, studied uh, quite um, a lot and provide a lot of information um, from his work. We use that in chemoenzymatic processes to make these um, sugars that had uh, uh, azide groups and we use click chemistry to attach to a carrier protein containing a propargyl square eight. And from that work to make these um, serogroup C glycoconjugates with uh, a hopefully a controlled amount of sugar, as well as the sites for conjugation, we were able to produce glycoconjugates that had higher antibody responses than controls. So then control, we basically had the, um, the unconjugated sugars and the um, free um, carrier protein. And then we see when we have, uh, using the enzyme to control synthesis with a degree of polymerization that we can estimate to be over 100 and those less than 47, we saw that these glycoconjugates do indeed create um, amino reactive products. So my, for my independent research, I wanted to learn more about the Neisseria serogroup W. Just like um, serogroup Y, uh, serogroup W is a heteropolymer. The polysaccharide from serogroup W is a heteropolymer. This in serogroup W, the serogroup W capsule polymerase creates a heteropolymer of uh, silic acid and galactose. It's a less well-studied capsule polymerase. Um, there's some initial or you know, groundbreaking work from um, Rita girardi shans group in terms of learning more about this enzyme. Um, my group, as well as the group of uh, Chai Chen at UCSD, um, also performed some uh, studies to look at the kinetics of this enzyme. So the capsule polymerase is a uh, three domain protein uh, which uh, catalyzes this reaction. Essentially in the presence of an acceptor, we have the enzyme taking galactose from UDB galactose and adding it to an acceptor. That same single enzyme can then use the nucleotide donor sugar CMP silic acid, remove silic acid and add it to this, this acceptor to make our um, heteropolymer, which contains uh, silic acid and galactose linked in an alpha 1,4 fashion. And this repeating unit is uh, uh, connected through an alpha 2,6 linkage. So the goal of, one goal of my independent research is to um, use the serogroup W capsule polymerase to make size controlled sugars so that we can uh, move more towards this, you know, well-defined homogeneous glycoconjugate. And we are using two strategies to control synthesis of these sugars. One is through targeted site-directed genesis of the enzyme. And we're using a photo cross-linking agent to help determine which amino acids to target. To help us with this work, um, we are using chemoenzymatic synthesis to synthesize a photo cross-linking derivative of CMP silic acid. We are using as a precursor MAN-DAZ, which is a uh, um, derivative of a uh, diazerine containing derivative of N-acetylmonosamine. And this was a generous gift of Jen Kohler and um, Matt Pratt. So this diazerine modified N-acetylmonosamine is reacted with phosphorenyl pyruvate and we use uh, silic acid synthase to make this diazerine modified silic acid. Next, we use the CMP silic acid synthetase uh, to make CMP sia DAZ, which is this nucleotide donor sugar with this photo cross-linking diazerine um, moiety. And we uh, use uh, essentially HPLC to monitor production of our CMP side DAZ. Once we make CMP side DAZ, our goal is to use this reagent to photo cross-link to amino acids within the sial transferase domain, which can help us to understand more about this enzyme. So this enzyme has three domains, the galactosyl transferase domain, an intervening sequence, as well as the sial transferase domain. It's 107 amino acids and about 120 kilodaltons. Like many of these sial transferases, polysyl transferases, there is no known crystal structure. 
So our goal is to use photocrossmaking to help us understand more about the binding pocket in this style transferase domain. We'd like to determine the sites of crosslinking to the enzyme by mass spec in collaboration with Dr. Lukash from UT Southwestern. And um, by determining which amino acids are in close proximity to um, where this compound binds, we can then go in and make some site-directed mutants and see what effect those mutations have on activity of the surrogate W capsule polymerase. This is a snapshot from some of our work in this chemoenzymatic synthesis. As I mentioned, we use two enzymes. Uh, we commonly express and purify these enzymes. So this is just showing a snapshot of the um, synthesis of the normal um, CMP silic acid. And when we perform these one-pot chemoenzymatic syntheses, we can essentially test our reaction product by seeing whether we're able to use that as a, uh, you know, a CMP silic acid in a reaction with the surrogate W enzyme. So here, um, this is some work performed by my graduate student, Lole, and we see that our enzymes were working as expected because we see a decrease, um, if we compare control to reaction, a decrease in this peak and an increase in a peak that has the same retention time as um, CMP salic acid, commercially available CMP salic acid. So the work with this is um, ongoing with CMP uh, SIA DAZ. We have a similar, uh, we see similar things where we see appearance of a product peak um, and we're using, currently using HILIC chromatography to help us understand our results related to that. Okay, so once we uh, you know, have our CMP sci DAZ and perform our photocrosslinking experiments, we want to do mutations. What's needed for this enzyme is an easy sensitive assay to evaluate you know, our wild type activity versus mutant activity. This enzyme lacks uh, a, you know, an easy assay to investigate activity with unlabeled acceptors. So uh, Chai Chen's lab from UCSD has done some elegant work using chromophore labeled acceptors in this surrogate W enzyme. We previously have done some work to try to understand how we can you know, um, use an assay using unlabeled acceptors. And one of the first iteration of this was using an absorbance-based assay. So we uh, published work using a multi-enzyme coupled transferase assay where we used uh, as our acceptor hydrolyzed surrogate W polysaccharide and essentially the um, action of the surrogate W enzyme. Um, this assay focuses on production of UDP and CMP. So through a series of um, enzyme reactions, we uh, basically couple UDP and CMP production by um, activity of the surrogate W enzyme to NAD oxidation, which we monitor at 340 nanometers. So in terms of you know, um, ease of use, this assay provided results. Um, however, it was you know, very, it's a very cumbersome assay at times. So we're able to get good, uh, reliable kinetic results for um, you know, performing michaelis menten type kinetics for CMP silic acid. However, our results with UDP galactose were inconclusive. So we decided to move on and try to find a easier assay and more reliable assay that we could use. Currently, we have uh, sort of honed in on bioluminescence as our assay of choice. So we are using commercially available kits from Promega, um, known as UDP Glow, in which the um, production of UDP during the course of the enzyme reaction. This UDP is converted to light by luciferase and that light we read on a luminometer and therefore we can um, couple the activity of the surrogate W enzyme to a light reading. And we've uh, changed our acceptors to something more well-defined, which is a silic acid trimer. We get good results from this work. Uh, once again, this is showing some of the um, data we get. This is uh, low lace work, and we this is a very sensitive assay. So sort of the limit of detection 
we have with the enzyme is about 125 nanograms. And we are currently using 10 minutes as our cutoff point for our uh, kinetic reactions. So work with this is ongoing. We are using uh, this well-defined acceptor. And then we're also lengthening this, the length of this acceptor using the serogroup W enzyme and the specific um, nucleotide donor. For example, we want to, um, when we want to test the activity using a um, galactosylated DP3, we use the serogroup W enzyme to add a gal galactose to this. Another method that we're using to uh, control polysaccharide synthesis is through use of competitive inhibitors or chain termination agents. We are using 4-acetylsilic acid in this work in which we use the enzyme CMP uh, silic acid synthetase to make CMP 4-acetylsilic acid. And we expect that this will be a chain termination agent and um, increase the presence of short chain length sugars. So Naya, who is an undergrad in the lab, as well as Ayobami, who is a PhD student, has done this work. And we did see uh, that we saw a uh, sort of increase in the presence of short chain length sugars using CMP4 acetylsilic acid and the serogroup W capsule polymerase. Uh, once again, for this work, we were using, uh, we went back to using a DMD label, so essentially a fluorescently labeled hydrolyzed W sugar acceptor, and we were able to get results showing that we saw an increase in the presence of short chain length sugars. Uh, currently, we are um, moving towards a more well defined acceptor, which was first described by Rita Girardi Shawn's group, which is a 4 MU, 4 methyl um, modified silic acid. And we use the serogroup W enzyme to uh, essentially add a galactose to this. And uh, because it's been shown by um, others that this enzyme needs at least a DP2, degree polymerization of two, um, to work with an acceptor. Okay. Another uh, goal of the lab is to investigate polysaccharides as biomaterials for heavy metal capture. And this is sort of a new avenue of our research. We know that water contamination is a public health problem uh, through an industry and industry waste. There is um, you know, pollution of waters and soils by heavy metals. And this takes place in rural areas as well as uh, we've heard a lot about certain urban areas where this uh, uh, heavy metal pollution of water is a significant public health concern. The goal of this project is really to understand whether we can engineer polysaccharides for bioremediation. Bioremediation is a process of um, the breakdown of environmental pollutants, um, especially metal cations and their complexes using bacterial biopolymers. So some disadvantages of bioremediation is the fact that, um, you know, it can be extremely sensitive to pH, temperature, ionic strength, but I want to focus on this point here that these polymers um, are already preformed. So the research question that guides this work is whether we can use capsule polymerases to enzymatically produce and opti optimize modified polysaccharides with enhanced binding ability to metal cations. So this is uh, essentially what uh, led to us to initially investigate what exactly is the binding capacity of these Neisseria-type polysaccharides. Okay. Uh, so in uh, recently published work out of my group, uh, Sujan Geimer, who was a, a master's student in my lab, we investigated you know, what is the capability of Neisseria-type B polysaccharides um, and to do this, we used cholaminic acid, which is a alpha 2 8 linked polysilic acid. It's uh, basically the same um, structure in Neisseria meningitis B and E. coli K1. So we used this alpha 2 8 linked silic acid, and we used the uh, some polysaccharide from Neisseria group W, which was a generous gift of um, Dr. Willie Van. So how we perform these assays, just a quick uh, overview of that, is we use these 3K uh, kilodalton cutoff filtration devices in which we add 
we have two situations. In the control, we have just the metal solution. And in the uh, sort of the reaction, we have the metal solution plus the polysaccharide. So either we'll have serogroup B polysaccharide, that cholaminic acid, or we'll have the serogroup W polysaccharide. We do a centrifugation step. So we incubate this and we do a centrifugation step. And essentially we partially allow um, some filtrate to flow through in both cases. And we, test the met we tested the metal concentration by uh, atomic absorption spectroscopy. Both the retentate in for the control, uh, retentate and filtrate, as well as the retentate and filtrate for um, the reaction, which is in the presence of polysaccharide. What we found is that, as expected, um, because we know polysaccharides have these multiple functional groups, such as hydroxyls, and then um, the case specifically with sialic acid, we have amino groups. Uh, so for our control, as we expected, we, um, when we don't have any polysaccharide present, there is uh, an equal amount of metal in, found in the retentate and the filtrate. However, when we add the polysaccharide from star group B, we see now that all of the metal is present only in the retentate. So no metal flows through into the filtrate. And we did another control where we just tested, you know, um, what's the polysaccharide alone, and there was no metal present. So this work tells us that the polysaccharide is, um, you know, chelating or binding to the heavy metals present in the solution. And this first test, we were um, using lead. Next, we used the surrogate W capsular polysaccharide. And uh, we were more limited in how much we had. So um, we weren't able to carry the studies through with um, copper as well. However, we see the same phenomenon in which we have um, in the control where we have uh, known polysaccharide present. We see that there are roughly equal amounts in the filtrate and the uh, retentate. When we include polysaccharide, we see that uh, there is more metal in the retentate. There is a small amount that is present in the filtrate. So why that is, uh, we're not quite sure, but um, effectively we can say that the surrogate W polysaccharide is slightly less effective at binding the um, lead compared to the surrogate B. Okay. So one of the things that we're uh, trying to extend this work, um, we'd like to engineer these polysaccharides for bioremediation. So right now what we're doing is sort of taking a computational approach and then um, being able to test that in the lab afterward. So we know that the enzyme um, the glycosyl transferase domain uses UDP galactose as a nucleotide donor sugar. What we're trying to do is to um, compare through um, amino acid sequences and um, in comparison to protein structures of GALNAC transferases, we want to see whether we can engineer a um, capsule polymerase that will now accept um, GALNAC, UDP, um, GALNAC as a nucleotide donor. So in this way, we want to create an, this uh, new sort of GALNAC silic sil acid polysaccharide and see what effect that, uh, you know, metal binding, what metal binding capabilities this polysaccharide would have. Because one of the reasons that may um, contribute to this less effectiveness for the um, circuit W sugar Maybe the fact that we, you know, the subgroup B is a homopolymer of alpha 2 8 linked silic acid. Silic acid has, of course, hydroxyl groups and a negatively charged carboxylic acid, but it also has an amino group at that five, that N acetyl um, functionality. So potentially we could engineer a new polysaccharide containing an N acetyl group and uh, see if we have increased binding capabilities there. So what we're doing is we're using um, computational approaches um, where we've been using ITASR to help us understand some of the three-dimensional structures of GALNAC transferases, as well as um, potential ligand binding sites in the galactosyl transferase that um, 
we could put, potentially engineer to have GALNAC activity. So we're doing um, uh, molecular modeling and simulations using Charm GUI and NAMD. We also are using some NSF Exceed resources that are that is available to my university through the Campus Champions program. And we'll be doing, you know, looking at these simulations using Chimera as well. So with that, I will um, sort of end with talking about the work in progress and where we you know, look, we are looking to move this work forward. So right now, in terms of the two projects, we want to control polysaccharide synthesis. We're going to continue optimizing the CMP side DAC reaction. Uh, we've done it and we see this increase in um, the uh, peak, but we're really focusing on using uh, HILIC chromatography to help us understand the results a little better for that. And we're going to move on with our collaborator to help us identify the sites of mining of that uh, diazerine modified CMP salic acid. Uh, we're continuing to work with the CMP4 acetylsia using that well-defined acceptor for mu psi gal, which we're enzymatically making. And then we're going to continue modeling the glycosotransferase domain of the capsule polymerase to see if we can engineer some new uh, specificities of this enzyme. So I'd like to um, end here and acknowledge the um, people who've actually done the work in my group. So this is a sort of an older picture of um, us. So Maya Johnson, I showed some of her work. She was um, involved in the CMP4 acetylsia. Uh, Lole has been doing the UDP GLOW studies. Um, Ayo has also contributed to UDP GLOW studies as well as um, making the um, well-defined acceptor for the CMP4 acetylsia work. I'd also like to acknowledge some of the other uh, students working in my lab and others. Uh, so these are my current um, group, and there are previous students who worked on these projects, with that, which I have highlighted. I'd also like to thank the NIH for support, as well as my um, university. So this work in terms of the heavy metal capture is, uh, I have some funding to develop that further through our Office of Tech Transfer. I'd also like to thank my collaborators at Morgan State. Uh, Dr. James Ochera from the biology department is helping with the um, uh, molecular modeling. Uh, of course, Jen Kohler has provided the MANDAZ. Uh, Dr. Van has been a source of initial reagents and resources during this project. And uh, I've already, already mentioned uh, Dr. Lukash and Dr. Paul Kovach. Uh, once we get those um, you know, well-defined sugars, we want to use some of his repartial square chemistry to make our glycoconjugates. So once again, I'll end here and thank you um, and to the organizers for your attention.